What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode we're going to be going over a little more on the G1000 NXI, but more importantly we're going to talk about how to enter a flight plan into the GPS. Today's route will take us from Baltimore, Washington International all the way over to Cleveland Hopkins International. So if you want to know more about the G1000 NXI and how to input your flight plan, then I think you should stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. All right, everyone, welcome back to the cockpit of the beautiful Bonanza, where we're going to be going over the G1000 and entering our flight plan into the GPS. So let's hop on right down into it. Oh, and by the way, if this video does help you out in any way, a thumbs up to the video would be greatly appreciated. And if you are new to the channel, I'd love to welcome you. Highly suggest you go down below and hit that subscribe and tick that little bell because you don't want to miss any future videos like this one. If anybody has any questions along the way, please post them down below and I will get right to you. So the first thing we need to do is smash on that flight plan button and it'll bring up our empty flight plan. So to get our cursor to populate here on the screen, all you need to do is smash in on the inner FMS knob. Then you're going to use the outer knob to scroll down to that very first block thingy there and then we're going to roll that inner knob to the right or left I don't really think it matters and then it will bring you up another little menu now from this menu we don't need to really use this knob anymore all we need to do is tap on this little button here and that is actually a keyboard icon if we can get it to work so we're going to enter our departure airport here at KBWI International hit enter to accept and then we can also enter a runway if you know the runway you're going to be exiting on you can do that right here we'll go ahead and enter 15 left hit enter and then enter to accept again and there we go next what we're going to do is scroll down to our destination airport again we're going to roll on that center knob try to click on that keyboard button if you can when you do it's going to light up in blue and then we can enter our arrival airport next we're going to go hit the enter button and then we are going to enter the runway that we're going to be coming in on and that's going to be 24 left so once we scroll down to that hit enter enter again and there we go now we have our origin airport and our destination airport and now we just need to enter everything in between all right so now that we have our origin and destination airport input into the fms you're going to see right here that it's now highlighting over the end route icon now what i like to do first is start everything from the beginning and finish at the end so i'm going to start with my departure procedures first and all you need to do is to go down here and hit that procedure button when you do it's going to bring up your procedure menu go down and highlight departure hit on the enter button and now you can highlight whatever departure you're going to be on for today now we're going to be using the terp 27 so if we just go down to the terp 27 highlight that hit enter and it will now populate us to the next menu which is the runway now again i i said that we're going to be using runway 15 left so we're just going to highlight 15 left hit enter again and now it's going to ask for the transition on this particular route we're going to be taking the j-e-r-e-s transition so all we need to do is scroll down there hit the enter button and there you go now it's going to populate all the different waypoints in this particular procedure and you just need to scroll all the way down to the bottom where you get the load button smash on the load button and there we go it is now loaded our departure procedure into the gps so now what I like to do after it has entered that departure procedure is now we can enter some en route waypoints. So we need to get our cursor back on the screen here. So we're going to tap on that center knob and then scroll down with the outer knob. Once you get to the en route, we can roll that inner knob again and then enter our next waypoint. This is only going to be good if you're going to be taking a direct path from your last waypoint. So as you can see at Jerez, if we were gonna be going directly to our next waypoint, then we could go ahead and add that waypoint in here. 
In this situation for today, we are not going to be going direct to a waypoint, but we're going to be hopping on the J211 airway. So we just hit the clear button to get rid of that, and while we're still highlighting over this little en route area here, if you smash on the menu button, you will see load airway will populate. Now what we need to do is hit the enter button, and now we can enter the airway that we wanted to jump on from the Jerez waypoint. Now that airway again was the J211, which is already at number one, so all we need to do now is hit the enter button, and it will now populate that Jerez airway. Now it's going to ask for an exit waypoint off of that airway. To scroll through the waypoints, all you need to do is roll on that inner knob, and now you can see all the different waypoints that you can exit along this airway path. The waypoint we're going to use today is the JST waypoint, so we just need to go right up here, highlight it, hit the enter button, and there you go. Now you can see all the different waypoints along this airway that we're going to be following. And again, all you need to do is roll down on that outer knob down to the load button, hit the enter, and ba-bam! It is now in our FMS. So now what we need to do again is get that cursor to populate. We're going to smash on that center knob and then use the outer knob to scroll down to the end route again. And we're going to be going direct to our next waypoint, which is going to be UPPRR. So once we highlight that, all we need to do is roll on that inner knob, click on that keyboard icon, and then type in UPPRR, and it will now bring up that waypoint. All right, so now that we have got that last waypoint entered, now we are going to enter our arrival procedures following our approach procedures. Now to do that is very simple. All you need to do is hit on the uh, procedure button and then it will bring up your approach, arrival, or departure. Again, we are going to select arrival and then hit the enter button. The arrival we're going to be coming in on today is the TRY arrival. So we're just going to use our inner knob to scroll down to that, hit the enter button, and now we're going to enter the runway of 24 left is what we're going to be using for today. Again, use that inner scroll knob down to 24 left, smash on the enter button, and now it's going to ask for the transition. Now the transition for this arrival is going to be the UPPRR transition. So as you can see, we entered that UPPRR already in the en route portion here and we're going to show you how to take care of that after this so once you scroll down to the UPPRR hit the enter button it will then bring you up all of the different waypoints along that path go down and hit the load smash on the enter button again and there you go so now we're just going to run through the flight plan real quick again we need to tap on that center button so we can scroll down now, as you notice here, as we're scrolling down through this flight plan, you're going to see that it automatically deleted that UPPRR from the end route because it knew that we were going to be using that as a transition. I think that is a thumbs up for the G1000 NXI. Oh, and hey, if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be spectacular. All right, so let's keep on going with this. So now that we have entered our complete arrival procedure in, now we need to enter the approach procedure. So again, we're gonna hop on that procedure button, select approach, hit enter, and here we go. We're gonna be coming in on the ILS-24 today. So we just highlight that using our outer knob. Again, hit the enter button. Now it's gonna ask us for a transition for this approach now if you know your transition you can go ahead and enter that in here but if you are unsure of the transition and you're going to want atc to vector you in to that approach then we're just going to select vectors hit the enter button now here's where you can enter your minimums for that runway now you're going to find this information here on your approach plates we will be getting into those in a future video now down below that it's going to give you one other important piece of the puzzle here and that is our ILS frequency. 
So be sure to note that down so you can enter that right in your nav computer and actually you would probably want to go ahead and enter that in right now. So all you need to do is go right up to that nav knob, turn that to 1099, and then we can go ahead and set that as our active by tapping on this button right here and that's going to swap over that right over to the active you can also see the waypoints along this route now you're going to go down to the bottom and it's going to give you two different options for this one you do not want to hit activate you want to hit the load button if you hit the activate button it's going to activate that particular leg of the route we are not there yet to activate that leg, so we do not want to activate that leg. Once you highlight the load, smash on the enter button. This route is not approved for GPS guidance. Now what that means is because we're going to be using an ILS, the GPS is not going to be navigating us in to this airport. So it is just letting us know that we know that. So all you got to do is hit on that enter button over the yes, and there you go. Now these altitudes are very useful when we are coming in on our approach and we're using the VNAV function of the G1000 NXI. Oh and by the way if you haven't seen how the VNAV works on the G1000 I will go ahead and post a link down to our VNAV approach that we've already done. So if you haven't seen that go down below and check it out. All right, folks, I think that is it for today. As you can see, it's really not that difficult to enter that information into the GPS unit. Again, if anybody has any questions, please go ahead and post those down below in the comments. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. And while you're down there, smash that thumbs up button. I want to thank everybody for joining us on the video today. I hope everybody got a lot of information out of it. And to all of my flight simmers around the world, keep the blue side up. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.